Okay, in this video we're going to look at the notion of a unit vector, the definition of some unit basis vectors, and some examples. So let's see, we say u is a unit vector if the length of u equals 1. So that's all there is to it, it just has to have length 1. And then in R2 there are two very important unit vectors called the unit basis vectors. And they are i with a hat over it, we'll just say i hat, and that is the vector 1, 0, so that's pointing one unit in the direction of the x-axis. And then j hat, which is 0, 1, and that's pointing one unit in the direction of the y-axis. And then in R3, so in three dimensions, we have three important unit basis vectors, and that's i hat, j hat, and k hat. So i hat is 1, 0, 0, so again, one unit in the direction of the x-axis. J hat is 0, 1, 0, so again, one unit uh, in the direction of the y axis, and K hat, which is one unit in the direction of the z axis. Okay, so this will, these vectors will be used just as another way to write down vectors in general. So, for example, we could say V is the vector um, 3, 5, minus 1, but then we could also write V as... 3i plus 5j minus k. Because notice, this is 3 times the vector 1, 0, 0, plus 5 times the vector 0, 1, 0, minus the vector 0, 0, 1. Great. So this just gives us an alternative way for writing down vectors. Okay, so now that we have this vector defined, I want to do some examples on this vector. So the first thing I want to do is find a vector u pointing in the direction of v that is a unit vector. So the idea behind this is as follows. Let's say we have our vector v, which is in this case in three-dimensional space, but it could be two-dimensional or whatever. And what we want to do is find a vector that is pointing in the same direction as v, but we'll call it u, and it only has length 1. So this is important sometimes because uh, at times what you'll want is the direction of the vector, but you don't want to use the length of the vector at all. So all, the only data you really want is the direction. And so that's why you would use a unit vector sometimes. Okay, so the first step in order to find this vector u will be to find the length of v. So let's calculate that. So notice the length of v can be found by the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared plus negative 1 squared, so that's the length formula for a vector. But now notice that is equal to uh, 9 plus 25 plus 1. Great, but that's equal to the square root of 35. So that's the length of v. And now the next thing to do is we want to set the vector u equal to 1 over the length of v times v. So in other words, it's that scalar multiple of v. So in this case, it will be 1 over the square root of 35 times our vector v, or we could write it out as multiplying the square root of 35 onto all of the components. So we have 3 over the square root of 35, so that will be in the first component. 5 over the square root of 35, that's in the second component. And then negative 1 over the square root of 35, and that is in the third component. And then we could rewrite this with the i, j, and k vector if we wanted to, but we won't do that here. Okay, I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at another example. Okay, so here we want to look at a related example. So let's find a vector u pointing in the opposite direction of v that is a unit vector. So let's recall from the last step that we had the length of v equals the square root of 35, and that allowed us to find a unit vector pointing in the direction of v. But now, instead of something pointing in the direction of v, 
So let's say that's our vector v. We want something that's pointed exactly in the opposite direction. And we want that to be our new vector u, and we want this to be a unit vector. So we can do that uh, in the following way. We can set u equal to negative 1 over the square root of 35 times the vector v. In other words, negative 1 over the length of v times the vector v, a scalar multiple there. Remember this minus sign makes the direction of a vector opposite. So, we'll get something very similar to what we had before, but each component will be negated. So we will have negative 3 over the square root of 35, um, negative 5 over the square root of 35, and then positive 1 over the square root of 35. Like that. And then if we wanted to write this in ijk notation, notice we could do that pretty easily. This would be minus 3 over root 35, times our unit basis vector i. This will be um, minus 5 over root 35 unit basis vector j. And then finally, plus 1 over root 35 unit basis vector k. So those are two representations of this vector. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at one more example. Okay, so let's look at this example. We want to find a vector w in the direction of v, but now we want the length of w to be equal to 5. So, let's recall what we have. Let's sketch up a little picture again. So notice before we had v, and v had length square root of 35, but now notice square root of 35 is about 6. So notice square root of 36 is 6, so that's pretty close to 6. So what we want is a new vector w, and I'm going to write it up here parallel, but with a different initial point, just you know, so it's not so messy, and we want this, this to have length 5. So in other words, it has the same direction, but now we'll call it w, and its length will be 5 instead of the square root of 35. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So the first thing that we want to do is take uh, 1 over the length of v times v. Now notice that gives us a vector with length 1 pointing in the direction of v. But now if we just take this and we multiply it by 5, then we have it. Now we have a, length, a vector of length 5 in the direction of v. So just as a reminder, with a 1 up here, we have a unit vector, which is length 1, because we've divided out by the length of v. But if we just multiply that whole thing by 5, we have a vector with length 5. Okay, good. But now let's recall that the length of v was 35. So that allows us to write this as 5 over the square root of 35, and then v again, which was 3, 5, minus 1, like that. And now we can just uh, push that into the vector, and that's going to be a vector whose first component is 15 over the square root of 35. The second component is 25 over root 35. And then the third component is minus 5 over root 35. Great. And that's the end of this example. Okay, so let's look at one more example. Let's say we have this vector v, which depends on t, and it gives us 3 times sine t, 3 times cosine t, minus 4 for all real numbers t. And our goal here is to find a new vector w with the length of w equals 12, and let's say it's in the opposite direction. of v. And we'll, we'll use our strategy that we used before. So here's what we want to do. We can say w is equal to um, something over the length of v times v. 
So notice if we put a 1 up here, we'll have 1 over the length of v times v, and we'll have a unit vector pointing in the direction of v. In other words, um, length 1 vector pointing in the direction of v. So notice we want the opposite direction. So since we want the opposite direction, we need to, need to include a minus sign. Now if we put a 1 up here, we'd have a unit, we'd have a unit vector in the opposite direction of v. But what we want is a vector with length 12 in the opposite direction, so we can scale this by a 12. Okay, so again, let's reiterate what this does. Dividing by the length of v turns it into a unit vector. Multiplying by 12 turns that unit vector into a vector with length 12. Multiplying by a minus sign puts it into the opposite direction. Okay, good. So this is what we want, but let's go ahead and on the side calculate the length of v because we'll need that. So this is going to be the square root of, so we're going to have um, 3 squared sine squared, so that'll be 9 sine squared, plus 3 squared cosine squared, so that'll be 9 cosine squared, and then um, plus minus 4 squared, so that's plus 16. But now notice we have 9 sine squared plus 9 cosine squared. We can factor a 9 out of that, and we'll get 9 times the quantity sine squared plus cosine squared, which will get, just give us 9. So we have the square root of 9 plus 16. Good, but the square root of 9 plus 16 is uh, square root of 25, which is just 5. So that's great. The length of v is just 5. So now that makes w equal to minus 12 over 5 times our vector v, which we can write as 3 sine t, 3 cos t, minus 4. But now we can multiply some of this stuff through. And no notice that's going to give us minus 36 over 5 sine t minus 36 over 5 cosine t, comma, now that's going to be positive 48 over 5, and that's the end of this example. We could write that in ijk terms if we wanted to, but we'll just leave it like that, and this is the end of the video.